Okay, uh, thanks for joining uh, the class uh, on holiness, the course BC209 once again. Uh, I hope you all are doing well. Thank you for joining. Uh, let's pray before we get started. Father, we thank you uh, for this time, this opportunity that we have, this uh, new day. We thank you that your grace and your mercy are new every morning. We thank you for your faithfulness uh, that is abounding and that sustains us, Lord. Uh, that even as we continue to learn on the topic of holiness, uh, Lord, I pray that you would continue to pour out your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding in a way that we would understand, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, right. So, so far in, in this course on holiness, uh, we've covered section one, which is considered of, uh, which consisted of six different chapters. Uh, we started off looking at the holiness of God, who is thrice holy in chapter two, that he is holy, holy, holy. And uh, in chapter three, we begin to see his desire for us as humans also to be a holy as he is. Right? So his holiness in me. And moving into uh, studying about perfecting holiness. right? Uh, where we learned about being empowered by the Holy Spirit um, and being sanctified by the Word. Uh, he is Jehovah Makadesh, the Lord our sanctifier. Uh, right? We are set apart as priests who are holy unto the Lord. As his people, we are called to holiness. So we've seen that, we've learned that in section one uh, quite extensively. And, um, and in chapter five, we looked at why personal holiness is important, right? The difference that it makes in our lives and, and various, various different aspects that contribute to a life of holiness is what we looked at. And in conclusion of section one, uh, the last chapter, chapter six, titled In the Beauty of Holiness. We learned just again a little bit more on uh, the beauty of the Lord, and how the beauty of the Lord is an expression of his holiness, is a manifestation of his of holiness. Okay, so that is all in um, section one. And uh, in this session today, uh, the two sessions that we have, we will uh, learn uh, on another topic called repentance, uh, recovery, and restoration, uh, for which uh, the PDFs have been shared with you all. So I would request you to keep uh, open those PDFs uh, at, and use them as reference as we go through today's class. OK? All right. Um, so we, we it, it, this is a, a small uh, section that is sandwiched between you know, the first section one and section three is about uh, we will where we will look at practical steps to overcoming um, uh, sin and and living a holy life. Uh, but in 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 this session, in two sessions or maybe three, depending depending on the time, uh, we will uh, look at the importance of repentance, what the Bible has to say about it, the meaning of repentance, and the process of repentance and restoration. Okay. Right. So, uh, why is repentance important? Um, you know, we we know that we understand. Uh, you know, we need to understand the process of repentance, uh, the importance of it, and what God's word teaches about repentance in uh, in our lives um, as believers as well. Right. Uh, we are called to be holy, and we've seen that, uh, but sometimes we commit acts of sin. Right? Do you agree with me on that? Uh, we are called to live a holy life, but there are times where we fall, where we fail. Uh, you know, uh, those are called committing acts of sin. There will be a time where you are jealous, or uh, where we uh, lie, or gossip, uh, etc., etc. Right? Um, so, what do we do? Uh, you know, uh, when we sin, uh, what should be our response as a believer 
uh, what does the Bible have to say about that? Uh, what should be our response? But we know uh, significantly the Bible t tells us or teaches us to repent. Um, so it should become part of our understanding and practice to repent when we do something wrong before God. Right? Uh, I will teach, is very clear about that, and I want to emphasize uh, that it should become part of our understanding and not just understanding it. Uh, you know, it we have enough head knowledge. Um, we understand that. Right. But it is not enough that we have understanding of repentance, but it also is very important that uh, you know practicing repentance uh, becomes part of our lives um, when we do something wrong before God, right? And so repentance uh, is our, our path, so to say, to recovery and restoration and eventually redemption. Okay, repentance is our road to recovery, uh, recovering from uh, the acts of sin. If we have fallen down, what do we do? Do we remain uh, down? Do we continue to live in sin? Or do we recover and get restored and be redeemed? Right? And so repentance is a powerful biblical truth uh, that, uh, that has perhaps been lost in contemporary churches. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost like a bad word. Uh, or it's a very scary word, I should not say bad word, uh, it's, it's very scary. How often do you hear sermons on uh, repentance? Right? Uh, but, and I, and I think it's very important that we, we speak about this topic um, of rep repentance. We emphasize this uh, to uh, our, a church congregation um, as well, right? So we must remember that while we are recipients of God's amazing grace and live by grace, we must also understand the place repentance has in our Christian journey. Um, you know, when we stop pre preaching or teaching about repentance, uh, we are allowing a lifestyle, we are compromising with the lifestyle of sin. Um, that's basically what it is. When we stop preaching about repentance, we are slowly compromising uh, with the lifestyle of sin. We are saying, okay, it's okay, grace covers everything. Uh, you know, we are living under grace. Um, all is fine, all is well. It's okay, you can do whatever you want to do, etc., etc. Right? Um, but it, again, we know that Bible teaches and speaks quite a bit about repent. And we will, uh, that's what this section is all about, is, and we will look at it quite extensively what the Bible has to say about repentance. Uh, just starting with, uh, you know, Jesus preached repentance, right? Jesus preached repentance. Uh, he, he preached saying, repent and believe in the gospel. Mark chapter 1 verse 15 is saying, the time is fulfilled, that means it's come, and the kingdom of God is at hand. It's near. That's uh, you know, uh, uh, kingdom of God is near. Kingdom of God is at hand. Kingdom of God is here. They're all used interchangeably as synonyms. Um, so he's saying the kingdom of God is at hand. It's it's there. It's arrived. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. And so, so here we see that. Uh, our lack of repentance can keep us from believing, right? So it's all, it's like say repentance is a prerequisite to believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I say that again? Repentance is a prerequisite to believing the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ. So in order to receive, we need to believe. Right, and we need to. Uh, sorry, in order to receive, uh, we need to repent. Right, our lack of repentance can keep us from believing. It's quite interesting that the the progression of those words when Jesus teaches that, and uh, you know, in 
again in the, in the book of Acts, through the book of Acts, we see that as the apostles and disciples were proclaiming the gospel, it is always followed by a call uh, to repent and believe. Okay, um, so there was not just the proclamation of the gospel, the proclamation of the gospel was followed by a call to repent and believe. Um, you know, that's basically why, uh, you know, in uh, the altar calls was very popular uh, in, you know, in, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, right? It was an opportunity for uh, given to people to express uh, the repentance saying okay now I have heard the good news um, and and I want to repent and that is an expression of them saying I believe and uh, similarly in Jesus also preached uh, he, he also said uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near kingdom of heaven is near in Matthew 4 17 he says for, uh, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand it has arrived it is there right and so uh, again repentance enables us to receive what uh, what is made available uh, in the kingdom of God okay. repentance enables us to receive what is made available in the kingdom of God. Right? He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so unless we uh, repent uh, you know, from, from our ways, uh, there is no receiving. And so here, in just these two points, we see that repentance allows and helps us, enables us to believe, because without repentance there is no believing, and without repentance, uh, we are unable to receive what is made, uh, what has been made available to us, right? And so to receive, encounter, and experience the kingdom of God. Okay? To receive, to encounter, and to experience the kingdom of God. Uh, that is God's rule and reign in our lives. We must first repent. Right? Repentance positions us to receive, um, right? And that's a, I think that's a very wonderful posture. Uh, you know, for us to have in our lives as we live as Christians. So most of the times, uh, we think that repentance is um, is only associated with an altar call or a salvation prayer uh, for an unbeliever who's choosing to become a believer. Uh, but again, as we uh, go through today's session, um, in either the first hour or the second hour, we will see that repentance is not just for the unbelievers; it's for uh, it's for everybody who's willing, and it's also for the believers. We are encouraged and called to live in constant repentance. And so we will learn that as we go ahead. Okay. So, so far we've covered that without repentance, uh, you know, there is uh, it, a lack of repentance keeps us from believing, and a lack of repentance uh, keeps us from receiving. Okay, it's a very, two very simple points, and uh, in that we see in the book of Acts, as they were proclaiming the gospel, they were also uh, called to repent and believe. And so repentance is quite huge. And if, if Jesus was preaching, uh, you know, uh, about repentance, it was very important. I think we can rest the case there, right? And so, uh, and. Is repentance for sinners only, or is it also for Christians? Right? Um, that's another popular question uh, that can be asked. Right? Repentance, is it only for sinners, or is it also for the church as a body of Christ, or also for Christians as individuals? And so it is true that we often think of repentance uh, and, and the need for repent, for those who are still uh, unsaved or unbelievers, right, because they want to be forgiven, uh, and which is absolutely true, right? The Bible says that He came to call the sinners to, to repentance. Right? And Mark chapter two verse seventeen it says, "I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance." 
okay um, are you with me i hope you are following um she said that i did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance now what is very important and very interesting uh, in this uh, whole thing is that we see the new testament begins by uh, the, with the message of repentance to the unbelievers who who want who uh, you know who want to give their lives and and express by saying that yes i believe in this gospel so new testament begins that way with jesus preaching about repentance and new testament also closes with jesus preaching repent to the church right that's how uh, you know, that's how the new testament uh, closes right? Sorry, excuse me, I'm having a little bit of a cold, so uh, pardon me. Okay, uh, we see that in the book of uh, Revelation, um, five of the seven churches, five out of the seven churches are called to repent. Uh, in, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, we see that uh, the church of Ephesus is being addressed. Right? The church in Ephesus, sorry. Right? It's saying, repent for from departing from their first love. And then we see a church in Pergamum uh, also received a call for repentance. Repentant, repent from tolerating false doctrine in the church that led people into sin. And then we see a church in Thyatira saying, repent from toler tolerating false teachers, prophets in the church who led people into sin. And Revelation chapter 3 verse 3, uh, repent from the works that were not perfect before God uh, is written to a church in Sardis. And finally, we know the church in Laodicea. Right? Repent from a false sense of spiritual well-being when they were wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Uh, they were pretending. Um, right. So, uh, we can in this session, you know, in this section at least, in this first chapter, we can see and conclude that repentance is important. It keeps us. Lack of repentance keeps us from believing. It keeps us from receiving, uh, because repentance is a prerequisite for believing and receiving. And we also saw that repentance is not only for sinners. Although New Testament begins with that message uh, for for the unbelievers, New Testament concludes with the message of repentance uh, being given to the churches as well. And um, that should remind us, uh, or that should uh, say something to us about the importance of the message uh, of repentance. Right? Um, so uh, are you all with me? Uh, well, everybody good? Okay. Wait, wait, thank you. So, uh, what exactly is uh, is what what does what does repentance mean? Uh, what does it really mean? We've spoken so much about it. Uh, in uh, we know so much about it as Christians. You heard the word repent, um, you know, and uh, you, you some of us have even prayed uh, in our prayers, saying, "Lord, I repent of my sins." Um, I'm sure we've done that at some point in time in our lives, and and uh, and so what does that mean right um so what does it mean uh, biblically right so the greek word uh, because you know greek is cool <laughs> uh, we have to learn about greek um, the greek word for repent is metanoia actually uh, if you're in bangalore I, my friend has a cafe called uh, metanoia um so it's Again, if you're in Bangalore, it's near Kotanur, so <laughs> you should visit that someday. Uh, metanoia, uh, it simply means, the literal meaning of that is to think differently. To think differently. 
um, that is, uh, in other words, to reconsider, reconsider your action. These are all um, just the dictionary explanation to it, right? But the core of it is to think differently uh, or to change one's mind for better. To change one's mind for better. I know we are all thinking of Romans chapter 12 right now, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, right? So to think differently, to reconsider, to change one's mind for better. Right? And uh, it also says that repent or to repent is a verb. Repent is a verb, an action word, right? A, which requires one to think differently, which leads into acting differently. Right? Uh, are you with me? So it's it's not just uh, you know enables you to. It's not just that you are thinking differently, but your thought life leads to a different way of life in, in a different way so and we saw that a little bit in when we were learn, learning a little bit about sanctification in the, the previous sections uh, we see that once uh, you know we choose to become a believer once we give our lives to God what happens in the process what you are actually saying is I repent of my sins I used to be so and so I used to think a certain way, live a certain way. Now, after we give our lives to Jesus, we cannot continue to live and think like your old self. Right? And that's why we are a new creation in Christ. So as a new creation, I cannot have the desires of the old man. I cannot have the thoughts of the old man. I cannot live um, a certain way like my old man lived. My words cannot be the same as the old man used. So I, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. That means everything is different in this action of uh, repentance. You are, you're saying, okay, I'm going to think differently. And because I'm thinking differently, my actions are going to be different. But as an old person, as an old man, I hated everybody. I didn't like anybody, but now as a new creation, uh, I am commanded to walk in love. If I am a follower of Jesus, I'm saying that uh, I love Jesus. That also means that I love people, and so I cannot live differently. Uh, it lives the same way as I was as an old man. Right? And so, repent is a verb. It's an action word. Right? It, it 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 is a call to action, or you could say it's a word in action. Right? John 1 says the word became flesh. Right? Word just did not remain as a word. Right? It became flesh. There was an action to it. Right? Um, so repentance in the Bible simply means changing our thinking and our action. Right? It again to elaborate it just a little bit more, it's, it simply means biblically to align our thoughts. To God's thoughts, to align our ways to His ways. Right? Uh, Proverbs 3, I'm, I'm reminded of that says, uh, lean not on your own understanding, right? In, but in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, right? Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. Um, so, I cannot continue to think a certain way like I used to based on my own understanding, but it is time that I align my thoughts, my understanding to his thoughts and in all in acknowledge him in all your ways. Right? Um, we we looked at that word ways simply means the way you do your life, right? If um, as 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 a Roshan, um, the I am I am a son. I've shared this before, right? I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a, a father, I'm a friend, I'm a teacher, uh, I'm a pastor, um, and uh, is there anything more to my life? <laughs> I'm sure there is uh, a musician, um, etc., whatever. Right? So 
there are so many different ways that's involved uh, you know in, in the way that I do life and I as an old in as my as an old person I could have um, been very evil and aggressive and violent as a son as a brother as a father um, um, as a friend as a teacher teacher pastor uh, would have been wicked in all my ways but now that I have repented in all my ways in as 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 everything that I just mentioned is now aligned to the ways of God and so uh, your repentance is now expressed in your actions and it is seen in your actions and you can say okay this person is living a repented life he is not the same he or she is not the same right um okay so if isaiah 55 or 6 to 9 uh, you know puts cap, puts this in, in in a beautiful perspective isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 to 9 says seek the lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near and pay attention to verse 7. It's so beautiful. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. If you can highlight, forsake his way, his thoughts, and return, please do so. Um, right? Let the wicked forsake his way that means you up uh, the way you do your life your your actions your old actions your wicked lifestyle give it up and the unrighteous man his thoughts give up the way you think your thoughts give it up the thoughts and actions the ways that don't align with the lord's give it up instead let him return to the lord or repent start begin to think differently and when you do that, he will have mercy on him. God will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Right? It's so beautiful, right? The God, the word of God is so powerful and because it expresses uh, the heart of God for us. Right. It is very difficult for words to express God and the beauty of who He is to define Him because <clears throat> um, no scribe, uh, no word or language can capture the wonder of our Lord uh, or do justice for, for, who, uh, the, for, for the wonderful God that He is. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's so beautiful when the Holy Spirit brings these words to life, when the Holy Spirit breathes His breath over His word. <clears throat> and, you know, when we read words like this, it's okay. If, if we forsake our ways, our wicked ways, if we forsake our unrighteous thoughts, and if we return to the Lord, if we draw near to Him, He will draw near to us. Right? He gives grace to the humble. An action of repentance is such a, an, uh, it's a, such a beautiful action of uh, humility. Right? Saying, Lord, I humble myself before you. Uh, and you can't repent if you're not humble, isn't it? Um, it's, why should, I, uh, why should I repent? I have not done anything wrong. Is an, is a mark of pride. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a bit. But... Uh, as wanting to repent uh, is saying is you saying that your the posture of your heart is humble and say Lord I repent and when we do that He gives grace to the humble right He will have mercy on us and He will abundantly pardon us not just pardon us uh, why why should they add the word abundantly right it's um, an overflow of pardon and forgiveness. And, and then we know in verse 8, with this famous verse, uh, which can be taken out of context so many times, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways are uh, your ways, my ways. It was originally in the context of repentance, right? Um, saying, you, you, 
you, you, you let go of your old ways because your ways, those are not my ways. Your, your thoughts are not my thoughts. My thoughts are holy. My ways are holy. And then goes on to say, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Right? And so repentance is simply as turning towards God, both in our thought and in our actions. That is simply repentance in a very simple way. That's what repentance is all about. So, um, you know, a believer changing their thinking about anything right, and aligning their thoughts and actions to God's thoughts and God's ways is also repentance. Right? An unbeliever turning from his wicked ways and wicked thoughts is also repentance. And uh, as a believer, changing uh, you know our thinking and our actions, our thoughts uh, is also repentance. So that's what repentance is uh, all about, right? Um, so let's pause here for a minute and uh, see if there's uh, anything that you would like to add um, from what we've just covered so far, or are there any questions that you'd like to ask? Okay. All right then. Um, thank you. Let's let's continue uh, to chapter three in the session. Um, so we concluded chapter two uh, with understanding uh, what repentance is and how it should affect our thought life and our action life. Right, and then uh, you know. Just like we say that uh, every action uh, has an equal and opposite reaction uh, in, in in the in, in the science world, uh, when we begin to live differently in 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 God's kingdom, we begin to bear fruits. Right? We begin to bear fruits. Um, the the world will use the word consequences uh, to be good or bad, but. Uh, in the kingdom, in, in in kingdom principle, when we begin to live um, like how Jesus taught us to live, uh, when we live according to the word of God, our lives begin to bear fruit. Right. Um, so, it is uh, as we've emphasized so many times uh, today. Repentance is not just a state of mind; it is expressed through a changed life. Right. Um, so John the Baptist in Matthew uh, chapter three, verse eight, um, he says, "Bear fruit in keeping with repentance." He says, "Bear fruit in keeping with repentance." That's simply saying that while we live a certain way, we begin to bear fruit. And uh, the Passion translation says, "You must prove your repentance by a changed life." Awesome, isn't it? You must prove your repentance by a changed life. Um, Apostle Paul he writes in um, Acts chapter twenty six verse twenty. Right? He was uh, he, he's actually writing this when he's recounting his early days of ministry to King Agrippa. Um, he says, "Must repent and turn to God and demonstrate it with a changed life." Right now, we're just continuing to talk about uh, the way we live life, our actions. It should just show that you are different, that you're a different person. Right? Um, 15 years ago, if you had met me, um, and my friends, some of my friends at least, still wonder how I am a pastor now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't take any credit for, uh, but I. I believe that the Holy Spirit uh, has helped me become a better person uh, in the in my journey as a Christian, in my journey as a believer of Jesus. Um, because 15, 18 years ago, uh, I was known for being short-tempered, and um, and yeah, not so very nice things. <laughs> I was a Christian still, uh, but. Uh, 
but as mentioned, um, you know, Holy Spirit's work uh, uh, has been gracious uh, in how He's shaped me, uh, and uh, yeah, and helped me become a, a better person to bear fruits of His kingdom, to uh, to 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 think differently and to act uh, differently on based on my thinking, according to the kingdom of God. Okay, so. Um, Bear fruit in keeping uh, with the repentance, as says Matthew chapter three verse eight. Um, this is session a section in Matthew chapter five verse twenty nine and thirty. We uh, we all know that. It says, uh, "If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it out from you. For it is more profitable for you than one of your members perish, than your whole body to be cast into hell." And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. Right? Uh, now, again, we know that this is metaphorical and not literal. If it was literal, then um, we would be in big trouble. Right? And so, um, it is not enough to say that my right hand or right hand is causing me to sin or to feel sorry that we sinned. Repentance means um, leads us to what Jesus taught, to get rid of what is causing us to sin. To get rid, there is no negotiating with sin. Right? We do not negotiate uh, with sin. We do not compromise with sin. Uh, if we allow a certain sin um, to stay in our lives, um, as the day goes by, it's the very thing that you allowed and permitted uh, will oppress you one day. Right? Um, and again, we read that in the Old Testament that the people of Israel, they were commanded to not compromise with the ways, with the actions of uh, the other nations of the land, in the land of Canaan, right? In the way that they worshipped, in the way that they offered sacrifices, they were said, do not compromise, right? do not negotiate, uh, cut it off, cast it off. Right, and in many cases, uh, it, it might not be uh, an easy process, or it it might be a painful process for some people. Right, uh, I'm I'm not sure if you've heard of this uh, channel on YouTube called the Skit Guys. Uh, right, they perform this wonderful short skits uh, on the biblical message, and one of the message, uh, one of the sk their skits was uh, that uh, one person pretends to be a god, uh, and he has a chisel and a hammer in his hands, and and there's this prayer, a person who makes the prayer saying, "Lord, make me more like you," and say, and God takes the hammer and the chisel and says, "Okay, I'll begin to make more like you," and he starts carving out. Okay, all right, I see jealousy. That's not of me, and then you know. It's you're using a chisel and a hammer. It's going to hurt. It's like oh, it hurts. Uh, you know, can you not do that? Can we avoid that? Well, no. If you want to look like me, that that's not going to be on your body. I have to take it off. All right. And I see gossip. Uh, I see anger or bitterness. That's not of me. And uh, and so you see, um, to pluck it, uh, to cut it off. Uh, will not necessarily be a pleasant process uh, and often a painful process as mentioned um, uh, but there are times that this happens in an instant by the supernatural uh, work of the holy spirit when he be, be, when he decides to demonstrate the wonder working power of jesus and there are times we journey through this process over time uh, we don't have explanation for both uh, right. Sometimes he may choose to give us an explanation, but he never owes us an explanation. Right. And so God works both ways and helps us through this. And so what we can learn from this is that we do not negotiate with sin. If something's causing you to, uh, or something of your old lifestyle is causing you to sin, don't negotiate it. Cut it off. Cast it off. And this is done 
uh, with, and we see that in the scripture that if we are just willing to be different, God is willing to help us. Uh, in, we read that in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Uh, actually, in verse 11, um, if I'm not mistaken, it says, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Right? Work out your salvation with, with fear and trembling. It does not say, work for your salvation. Okay, uh, it doesn't say work for your salvation. It, it's not what it says. It says work out. That means exercise. Work it out. You know, uh, action. Act on it. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And then verse twelve. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, uh, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation in, with fear and trembling. Um, and verse 13 it says, For it is God who works in you. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of for his good pleasure. He is willing to help you on this journey. Right? But the challenge arises where sometimes we are willing but unable to overcome right uh, i have been there right? it's we are willing i want to overcome a certain sinful uh, uh, lifestyle but i'm unable to in my own flesh and then there are times where we are not even willing right? and that's when we pray right we, we pray asking god to help us holy spirit um you know I am willing. I am willing to look like you. I am willing to be like you, to walk like you, to talk like you, and 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 do what is pleasing uh, before you. So, will, will you come and work in me? And the scripture says that it is God who works in us. Only if we are willing, right? Uh, he comes and helps us in our journey. And. Uh, I want to conclude this section uh, with a few scriptures from the Bible that says, uh, "When we return to the Lord, um, and you know, you have these bunch of scriptures, uh, you can go through it when you can. But time and time again, it says in Deuteronomy, for example, in thirty verse one to three, it says, "Return to the Lord, and He will have compassion on you." Right? A return to the Lord, He will deliver you. In First Samuel chapter seven. If you return to the Lord, He will deliver you. Right? If you return to the Lord, remnant of you. Right? And Second Chronicles chapter thirty verse nine, He says, "If you return to the Lord, uh, you will be treated with compassion. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful." Right? If you return to the Lord in Isaiah nineteen, He will heal us. Return to the Lord, He will have mercy on us. In Isaiah fifty five verse seven. If you return to the Lord, He will heal us. But then if you don't, uh, in Hosea 7.10, He says, And the pride of Israel testifies to His face, but they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek Him for all of this. Pride stops them from repenting. Non-repentance, uh, when you don't repent, the posture of your heart is pride. And, um, and so, yeah, uh, I, th I hope that there was something that you could, uh, we could take away from, uh, from this session, at least from these first three chapters about repentance. Um, so what we can do is we'll pause here and uh, we will come back after our break and uh, continue on the study of repentance. All right, thank you. <laughs> 